This is Dream Chaser Tony Woodall, and you're listening to the Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams Podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams Podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers, this is Amy J here with you on this wonderful episode. And I can't wait for you guys to hear our latest guest because he is doing some amazing things and he's going to be sharing some tips that I think every Dream Chaser, no matter where you are in your chase, needs to know. And so today we have Tony Woodall is a man of different talents. He's an electric content management specialist, a blogger, a speaker, a podcaster, and author of the nine steps to successful goal achievement. The How-To Guide for Goal-Setting Success. Can you guess what we're talking about today? One of Tony's first passions is helping people succeed and improve their careers and lives. He created a tra training program, Goal Getting, Don't Just Set Them, Get Them, to share the skills needed to set goals effectively, use techniques to change the negative, limiting beliefs and thoughts in the subconscious mind, and turn them into goal-achieving, success-oriented, positive beliefs and thoughts that will allow you to get the goals you set. So guys, listen up very closely because this is going to help you in your dream chase. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Amy J, thank you so much for having me on your show this morning. Tony and I met uh, a couple months ago, and um, I'd like to think that we hit it off. I think so. I was impressed by what you were doing at uh, Podcast Movement. That was, uh, you know, a bit, I'm big on dream chasing and, you know, achieving goals. And when I saw what you were doing, I was just impressed with your innovative idea. And when I saw what you were doing, I was like, I have to have Tony on my show because, you know, one of the things that people have with dreams is, you know, there's usually a goal, but sometimes it's not defined. That's correct. Yep. Most it, people don't. You know, and it's kind of that ephoral thing in the air that they just don't understand. And sometimes it's, they never get to the end because they don't know what they're going after. That's very true. That's probably one of the first things that you have to start defining when you start thinking about creating a goal is what do you want? You know, you have to know specifically what your goal is and what you want to accomplish and where what you want to achieve. And, you know, having that uh, specificity will, you know, really make it much easier to achieve your goals. And I just like saying specificity. That's, <laughs> Who <you know>. doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? There's not too many op opportunities for you to say it. That's right. Yeah. No, and one no. of one of my um, mottos uh, in the goal getting program is specific is terrific because you have to be specific when you're setting your goals. Well, I like that. I like that. Now, Tony, I was reading your bio and, and guys, you, you haven't read the entire bio. So Tony has a, a variety of a background. I said that already. But, you know, um, what you do know is one of the things uh, from his intro that I, I left out because I wanted to talk about it here is um, saying he didn't know what he wanted to be when he grew up. He has tried a lot of things. And Tony, you were told by your parents and grandparents that you weren't college material and you believed them? Uh, I did, yes. Uh, that They did say that uh, and actually told my brother as well, um, you know, that we weren't college material, you know, though I graduated in the top 20 five percent of my high school class uh, wow. that was that was what I grew up believing that I wasn't college material and I think what it really boiled down to is they felt and taught me that I that they couldn't afford to send me to college and that I couldn't afford to go to college mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really the ulterior motive for that uh, was <clears throat> you know not so much that I wasn't smart enough um, but that I, I think they just didn't have the money and a lot of people think you have to pay and I that was my belief for many years that you have to pay your college tuition all up front as soon as before you can even go to college which is not true um, no but I could see how you you would think that yeah 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 and that again they were not need none of my family had ever graduated from college so they didn't know and uh, that uh, you know is the belief that I grew up with but yeah I that was, you know, that's one of the things that we teach in goal getting is how to overcome those things that you learn from others that aren't necessarily true, but 
they're knowns to you and your subconscious mind. And as you grow up with that, sometimes those things within our subconscious mind can make us, uh, you know, have limiting beliefs or not understand where we can actually be successful. And I, and I want to come back to that, but how did you get into this? I mean, you, you've worked many jobs, as as I've been told, and, and you kind of always had that, had that business spirit to you. But I mean, how did you come up with all this? Well, yeah, I did. Uh, I've always been entrepreneurial since I was a kid. I, you know, whether I thought I could go to college or not, I wanted to be successful. I, I wanted to, you know, achieve different dreams. I had a lot of dreams and, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I didn't have a defined um, idea of, you know, what I wanted to be. And um, so I just started doing things that I wanted to do. I had different dreams to be successful. And uh, eventually I got to a point after I was out of high school and working minimum wage and, you know, less than desirable type work to, you know, be successful and make a lot of money, uh, I decided I started training in the martial arts and was learning how to, you know, use the mind. We had some mental techniques that we were using to, you know, be successful in the martial arts. And I really wanted to understand how the mind worked. You know, how can I become a better person? And I took some classes in hypnotherapy and I started studying hypnosis, um, learning how to be a hypno hypnotherapist, did become a, a hypnotherapist for a period of time and started delving into the mind. And I started learning how we can affect the subconscious mind, how we can turn those negative and limiting negative or limiting beliefs that we have into positive, successful, uh, you know, oriented beliefs. And I started working on that. I learned a program through uh, the hypnosis teachers that I uh, was uh, studying from how to really get in there and change your success habits. So it's really, it's, it's really a, um, it, it really is a, men it's not even a mental game, but a mental issue. It is a mental issue 99% of the time. Yeah. And just, uh, I mean, earlier, what you were saying um, that I wanted to kind of get back to and how we have these beliefs and how, um, you know, we don't often know that college, you don't have to pay up front, but there it is. There's a roadblock if you don't know the correct, because, you know, like for you, no, none of your family had gone to college, so no one knew better. That's correct. And, you know, that's one thing and you know, and I didn't have you, you're supposed to some rambling here. But one of the things that you're supposed to have is guidance counselors in high school. And not one of them told me otherwise, you know, not, not, a, not one of them told me, well, you're in the top 25% of your class. You're actually doing very well. You should go to college. Not one that I recall. I and mean, they may have, but I don't remember that far back. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't recall ever being counseled that, oh, you can go to college. You know, you can get scholarships. You should try to do this. Or you could work and go to college. You could go to class, you know, one class a semester and eventually graduate. You know, I didn't, they, nobody counseled me on that. So you really have to, you know, find somebody, you know, if you want to do something, find an expert or somebody who knows something about it and ask questions and learn from them, uh, gets into a mentor program or, you know, something like that. You have to have mentors in life. And I didn't understand that until too late, not too late, but till late in life as well. Is that, uh, is that why you give back the way you do? I mean, you do some amazing things with your show, the Goal Getting Podcast, and your website. Guys, you should check it out. The links will be on the show notes. Um, Tony has wonderful things going on there. I mean, there's a quote pack to help inspire you. Your show is a, is a weekly show, right? It is a weekly show. I do a weekly interview show and also weekly training. I'm getting ready uh, starting this week to actually or the week that I'm talking with you to discuss, you know, the subconscious mind, how that works, how you can start working to overcome that along with these nine steps to successful goal achievement that I always talk about. And they kind of work towards, you know, modifying the uh, beliefs that we currently have in our subconscious mind. So we're going to be talking about that, but I also have a quote of the day that I do on our show. So it's also a daily show where I read and talk about quotes that uh, inspire or motivate, motivate me that I've heard from guests on my show uh, or those that uh, I see or read, you know, periodically during the week. I'll put those on our show and I give some of my interpretation of what those goals mean to me and or should mean to other people or how they can help you. So. That's great. So guys, if, if you ever need inspiration, definitely check out the Goal Getting Podcast. Um, again, links in the show notes. 
so that um, if you ever need inspiration, there's at least one place. I mean, hopefully you're coming to Chasing Dreams as well, but there's another place you guys could go to get that inspiration because the quotes are, I, I love quotes. I'm a big fan of motivational quotes. Um, I think, so, you know, everybody has a time and place where a certain quote can affect you and it's just profound. Exactly, exactly. And the fact that you're doing this and helping to inspire others is, is a great thing. And also one of the things that, that, you know, why I wanted you on the show, but the main thing was I wanted to talk about your nine steps. Mm -hmm. My nine steps to successful goal achievement. Again, most people have heard of smart goals, um, you know, S M A R T and, you know, with smart goals, they were actually developed in the, or popularized, I should say in the eighties as a way to, for setting business goals, but they really carry over, you know, into all of life, you know, and the smart goals being specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And those particular goals or characteristics should be part of every single goal. And they are in the nine steps to successful goal achievement. We do talk about having those as well. Uh, again, specific is one of those, which we have recently just covered, you know, my specificity, which I like to say, <laughs> um, is, you know, one of those goals. So w what I've found, though, is that there are really other steps to that that need to be added, um, things that, you know, are part of that and, you know, go even further into, you know, the steps that you need to, to you know, just build on to go through that. So, uh, you know, we have the, you know, nine steps to successful goal achievement. What I've really done is I've broken those down into three areas uh, to help you, you know, to get all of the nine steps and into three, what I call three keys to success. Mm -hmm. And those three keys being the what, and in the what is what do you want to achieve, you know, and that's where we look at the, you know, different steps of writing it down. And that's one of the steps that's not part of the SMART goals, but it's probably one of the most important steps that you have to take. And that's writing your goals down. You know, you have to have clearly defined written goals. And that was one thing that uh, Napoleon Hill talked about in Think and Grow Rich when he did his interview of the 500 most successful people of his time. He found that all the people that he talked to had one defining characteristic between all of them, and that was they wrote down clearly defined written goals. So, so step you know, one is write it down. Yeah, step one is write it down. You <laughs> have to write it down. And that, you know, we, we're getting ready for you know, the end of the year, New Year's resolutions and, you know, New Year's resolutions are very popular. I mean, there's even a website on, you know, the White House website or the government website has a, a link to, you know, New Year's resolutions. And uh, that's really, how you know, it really, it does. <laughs> and uh, I can give you the send you the link and you can put it on your show notes. But uh, it, it talks about New Year's resolutions, but most people don't complete or do not achieve their resolution and that's because they don't really have the intention or they have the intention and th that's my next uh, goal uh, quote of the day is talking about intention and um, you know people have the intention but without doing something then you're not going to actually be able to or you're not going to get anywhere if you just have the intention you know people that do things or what count, you know, it's people with intentions or have the intention to do things are good, but you know, you just have the intention of doing that. And that's what most of the time New Year's resolutions are. We say, oh, I'm going to lose weight or, oh, I'm going to, you know, get a better job or whatever your resolution is. I'm going to quit smoking. Those are, you know, the top three New Year's resolutions. They don't go through the steps to set it as a goal. It's just an intent. I intend to do that. Right. And so, that, so it's kind of like a ephemeral, ephemeral kind of thing out there, but it's not really a solid thing. It's not a solid thing, you know, and unfortunately that lasts about two and a half months. And then, you know, we usually forget about it because it was just in our mind and we got so many things going on. We don't really remember what those goals or those new year's resolutions are until you get down until September and you go, Oh, I didn't achieve my resolution. I'll just do it again next year. Right. You know? And uh, you don't do that. So writing it down, you know, because when you write things down, and I like to write them down manually with a pen and a pencil or whatever on paper or something so that it works to, you know, there's an autonomic response when you're doing handwriting and it goes, bypasses the subconscious mind and can go directly into our subconscious. So we want to write down our subconscious or we want to write down our goals clearly and specifically, 
and then it kind of helps go into the subconscious mind. We don't have to, you know, think about it or do a lot. So it, it's just one of those techniques that we learn in goal getting to, you know, help go into and modify our subconscious mind. But it's one of the key steps. Write it down. The next one, you know, part of the what is to set a deadline, and this goes into part of the SMART goals, but you have to have a deadline. Dreams without a deadline are just a wish, you know, so you have to really put a... Well, that was actually deep. Yeah, it, 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 you, we, we have to dream, you know, dumb, dreams are critical. You have to have that dream because without that dream, we would be in the Stone Age, and you have to have a dream of what you want to accomplish, and you have to be able to see that and to visualize it, and, and dreaming is a lot of visualization, and visualization is a key mm -hmm. component of this and that's actually part of the uh the third key to success is included in that but you have to have a deadline when are you going to accomplish this and it has to be realistic you know you want to be and set your dreams and your goals out of your comfort zone but they still have to be realistic you know if i was to say that i wanted to be a doctor next year well i don't think that's ever going to happen. I haven't graduated from college to begin with, so that's not going to be, you know, something that uh, I would be able to achieve within a year. So I have to be realistic. And to that point, uh, um, when you say be realistic, guys, I, he's not saying don't wish to be a doctor. He's saying, oh, absolutely not. You know, being a doctor is a fantastic dream and one you should keep. He's saying be realistic about the timetable for that. Uh, exactly. Le leave the dream as be a doctor, but don't kid yourself that you can do it in 24 hours or one year exactly okay. exactly yeah no definitely the dream has got to be there and the dream can be realized you know if you can see it believe it you can achieve it but you have to be realistic you know a time frame is what's causing it to be unrealistic not the dream itself so you know the uh, you, know, you have to be realistic in you know your deadlines and your time frame uh, the other is the how. How do I achieve that? And most people don't understand, you know, when I, again, set a New Year's resolution, I just say I want to lose weight. Well, what does it take to lose weight? You know, what action steps do you need to take to be able to do that? I have to eat better and I have to eat less and I have to exercise more or at least burn more calories than I take in and, uh, you know, in some manner. So I have to know what the steps are that I'm going to be able to do that. And then in our how, we also talk about tracking that, measuring it, tracking it. The goals need to be measurable, but how do I measure them? You know, that was one of the things I never understood growing up is how do I measure my goals? You know, how do I make it measurable? Uh, or even if it is measurable, how do I track it? So we talk about a program to track the goals. How do we do that? You know, and we like to assign a value to each item that we're tracking and, you know, be able to pay ourselves a little bit or reward ourselves, which is part of the third key as well. Um, and then the next part of the how is I have to make a commitment uh, to myself. And I like to sign a, what I call a, you know, mental promissory note, you know, a, a, what a mental script contract with myself where I'm telling myself how much I'm going to earn or, you know, what I'm going to do. And I'm actually signing my name to it so that I can have that. Um, so it's kind of like making myself. a contract with yourself. Exactly. Making a contract with yourself and contracts are important. We all know the value of contracts. We sign them all the time. We sign our name to, you know, promissory notes, um, you know, and we want to make sure that we're honest and pay our debts. And if we're making a contract with ourselves, we certainly want to pay ourselves you know, we right. owe ourselves. So that's why we do that to give us that mental uh, accountability in there. So, so, you know, so that's, you know, part of the how. And so um, I, I think you've covered eight of the nine. Did we talk about the why? We have not talked about the why yet. And the why is probably, you know, even though I'm included as the third key, it's probably one of the most important keys uh, in there that cover all the nine steps. And the why is your motivation. Why do I want this goal? What do I want to accomplish? Or what is the reason for me wanting to achieve what I'm trying to achieve? And you have to understand your own motivation. I can't motivate you. I'm, I like to consider myself a motivational speaker. But I'm not really a motivational speaker. I'm more of an inspiring speaker because I'm going to inspire you to keep yourself motivated to, you know, follow your motivation that you have to do that. And you have to understand what your why is. Really dig deep down. You know, we go into, you know, talking about business goals and smart goals. We go into, you know, there's a the lean program where you start asking, you know, the why five times. It's kind of like being a three-year-old, you know, where somebody says, well, I want to lose weight. Well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, I want to look better. Well, why do you want to look better? Well, I want to be able to, you know, wear nice clothes. Well, why do you want to wear nice clothes? Well, I really want to 
be healthier so that I can live longer. Well, why do you want to live longer? Well, so you get into right. That, you you know, kind of so you break get, it down. You break it down till you eventually get to, well, I have children and I'd like to see them grow up and have their kids of their own and be a grandfather and and play with those grandkids and be able to run around and have fun with the you know a three year old yeah. and answer their whys. So you know you get into that. Well, what's the real meaning? Well, I don't want to live longer and be healthier so that I can be with my children longer, whatever that is for you, that, you know, is your goal. And that's your motivation. You have to really visualize that and visualize your dream, visualize what your goal is and see it, and then be able to reward yourself when you accomplish the small task. You know, we set up the action plan and the task, and we teach you to reward yourself for those accomplishments, even the small ones along the way. As humans, we love to receive rewards of some sort. Uh, you know, we love the attaboys. We love, you know, pats on the back. We love, you know, getting oh, absolutely, the yeah. stars and the check boxes that, on our things that's in school and things like that. You know, we're all graded on things, A, B, C, whatever. Um, we like those rewards, so we need to do that when we achieve the small things as well as the big things. Uh, so we talk about rewarding yourself and that's part of the mental program that we teach with the mental bank method. We talk about how to reward yourself mentally uh, so that your mind realizes that you're able to, you know, go out and, you know, achieve what you want to do. One thing I want to kind of go back to Tony is the, the, um, the, when you're defining your why, another reason I think it's so important is for the other thing that it can show is, is it really your why? Is it really your dream or is it someone else's that has been imprinted upon you? Say um, medical school, if we were using mm -hmm. the example previously, is it that you want to go to medical school or is some your parents or someone else kind of put their dreams upon you? Exactly. Oh, that is such a, that is a value bomb you just gave your people there. That is one of the things that you really have to understand. Is it your path that you're walking or is it somebody else's path? Um, you know, do you see that a lot? Do you see a lot of people oh, who, with, with, well, with the why when they, when they figure that out, it's, it's not theirs. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's, you know, they say, and I don't know the exact statistics, but over probably now 70% of people going to college don't do things in their career that they went to school for. And a lot of that is because they went to school to do something and to be something that somebody else wanted. And then when they get out there in the real world or they get into college and they see other things that they like, that they want to do, then they realize, well, I didn't really want to be that. And I, you know, I talk constantly to, you know, people, entrepreneurs nowadays that, you know, oh, well, I'm a trained, I'm trained, I'm an attorney, you know, I, I went to law school, but, you know, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer because my dad was a lawyer, my mom was a lawyer, or a doctor, or this or that, because their family was, but they got into it and they go, oh, I really don't like this. It's not me. Right, it's and not their passion. It's not their passion. It's not their path. You know, you have to, you know, get into and define and figure out what your why being, what is my goals, what are my path, you know, and whether it's and it's not necessarily because of what um, people t want you to be. It's also sometimes you have your goal is you start thinking, well, I want to make more money. So you do things for the money or to get, you know, more income or something like that. But it's not really what your passion is or what you want to do. So you just do something else. And I did that for years. You know, I've recently um, started working as a community manager for the company that I work for and being able to teach and mentor and do things like that because that's my passion. But for years I worked in IT. I was actually very successful, became chief information officer of, you know, mortgage companies and very successful in that. But as I started doing it and realizing I don't really like this, you know, it's not really my passion. I'm very good at it and I do well, but it's not me. I like more being out there helping people, talking to people. I love to speak. I love to, you know, mentor people and help them achieve their goals. And that's something that really inspires me when I see other people doing better that I may have helped. And that, uh, you know, that's my path now. That's where I'm headed in my career and my life right now is spending time and what I do to help other people achieve what they want to do and try to help them find the right path that they're on. And, so. and you're doing that. And, and what I love is, and, and something for you guys to keep in mind is, you know, Tony 
worked as CIO for, for a while and he didn't necessarily like it. He had to do it because of the circumstances, but he was aware that that wasn't what his dream was. And he was working uh, to, to reach his dream in different ways. I mean, you never know how things are, are going to happen. It's the journey. You know, sometimes we have to do these experiences we don't necessarily want to do because of circumstance. But the important thing is y you, you work on your dream on the side it, during breaks, you know, whatever it is, you find time to do it because it'll happen. It will. It will. And it said two, you know, about two years ago, I realized I basically had one of those aha moments where I was sitting down going, I'm just really hate what I'm doing right now, which was in IT and doing the uh, enterprise content management. I just wasn't having a good time. Uh, didn't like what I was doing anymore, which I didn't like before, but I did it again because the money's good. Um, but I really wasn't enjoying it. And finally, I got to an aha moment where I said, I really need to follow my dream. My dream is to you know, speak, be a public speaker, be able to share this message that I have, to be able to mentor people and help them grow and train. I love training people. I love you know, expanding other people's minds and dreams. And so I started working on that in my spare time, still doing the job that I have and yep, you know, building are. up my social media presence and you know, becoming successful at that part. But that was all in my spare time. And then recently got the opportunity. I had a, actually was looking to change careers and uh, but change locations and you know, get out of what I was doing at that time. But I actually found another job doing exactly the same thing, um, which I wasn't really, but I just needed to change. Um, and then also this opportunity came to be the community manager, which in doing that gives me all the opportunity to do exactly what my passion was, which is where I was trying to build my career to go into a training and, you know, mentorship type program. And the opportunity came and, you know, it it's an awesome out. thing. I mean, when, when, yeah. when you get to the realization that things are working out, I mean, it, it's an amazing feeling. And I know Tony, I can speak for Tony on this is, we, we only want that for you guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. That's all I want is to be able to help you achieve your goals, your dreams, and, you know, be the person that you want to be. And once you define what you want to be, then we can work towards that. So I just want to recap the nine steps, guys. Just make sure you caught them as we were talking about it. Um, Tony, please correct, correct me if I miss any of them. Um, write it down. Mm -hmm. Be realistic. Set a deadline set an action plan, measure it or track it in some way, define your why, visualize it, make a commitment, and reward yourself. Absolutely. I got them. You got them. And those are it. You know, and re reward yourself, especially. You know, we think that's kind of, well, what does that got to do with uh, goal achievement and goal setting? But the rewarding yourself, we, we, we live on rewards. We want to be good. We want to accomplish things. And, you know, whether we like it or not, that's, you know, being successful at something, we need our own reward. And that can be anything, whatever you feel is rewarding to you that makes you feel good. Um, you know, it can be just patting yourself on the back or, you know, going out and buying a special treat for yourself, you know, within, you know, reason, of course, you know, yeah. unless, the, the unless key, you the key part, that. what you just said was within reason, guys. So if your yeah. goal is to lose weight, don't go buying a big steak dinner with ice cream on top of that and all that just to set yourself back. Okay. Exactly, so yep. be within reason of rewarding yourself, but Tony's absolutely right. You got to You got to congrat. It's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You got to reward yourself every now and then. Exactly. And he said, just rewarding yourself doesn't necessarily mean eating stuff. You shouldn't, it could be buying yourself that new pair of pants or that new shoes that you can now fit into that you've always wanted so that's a great suggestion assuming yep. that's your goal i mean except assuming that's your goal yeah you know and whatever it is it doesn't even have to be related to your goal if you guys have been uh eyeing a new camera and you're trying to reach your dreams then say hey if when i meet that dream I, when i get to this goal point halfway point to my dream i will reward myself with that camera you know whatever it is mm -hmm. you know we, we all have different things we all have to treat it individually but like tony said you got to figure it out for yourself you got to ask yourself these questions and you have to do these things exactly and i'm so thankful tony that you were able to share these nine steps with everyone because uh i think it's very important i think you know as dream chasers we often have that dream that's not a problem for us the problem for us is what is the goal in that dream you have to make it 
uh, real, like Tony said. And again, you have a dream. Just figure out how to get to it and put that as a goal and, and do the steps that it takes to get there. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I can say if, if you guys need help, you can always ask me. And I'm pretty sure you can go to Tony as well. Yes, you can get to me anytime. I'll be glad to help you. Now, Tony, now that we've got the fun stuff out of the way, it's time for the, for the rapid fire, which I know you're nervous about. I am nervous about it. Don't be nervous. It's it's not the categories aren't scary. They, they're you, they're everyday things. You'll you'll be fine, uh, guys. For anyone who is not familiar with the show, Rapid Fire is a game that I play with my guests. It's one round. Um, if you want me to do more rounds, let me know. But I think one round is enough for now. Um, where the guest picks a number between one and three, and then we kind of go back and forth, naming things associated with that topic. For example, sports. If it's sports and Tony's going to say baseball and I'll say football and he'll say soccer and I'll say writing and they're going to, then I'm out because writing is not a sport. Okay. No matter what you say, it's not. <laughs> Everything's a sport. I, yeah. I know sleeping. It's, <laughs> it's not a sport in terms for this game. Okay. Okay. Um, right. So Tony, a number between one and three, sir. Oh, my favorite number of those is three. Is it? It is. Breakfast foods. Eggs. Pancakes. Cereal. Oranges. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Tony, are your, are your breakfast foods limited? Uh, well, I pretty much eat the same thing every day. <laughs> you um, know, I was holding on to grapefruit. I was really, in my head, I'm like, please don't say grapefruit. Because yeah, I had I, nothing after that. Yeah, I, I'm very, uh, I, I eat the same breakfast almost every day. But that's, you know, but I do like many different things. But I'm very much... Uh, I like my eggs and uh, scrambled and things like that because I'm trying to keep from eating the things that I really love, which are pancakes and waffles uh -huh. and uh, donuts and things like that. And only because I'm on a weight loss uh, goal at this point. So I'm um, trying to get in better, not so much weight loss, but a better health goal at this point. And uh, I try to avoid things like that. But uh, I love them and they are big breakfast food fans. I understand. Favorites. I understand breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. Yep, I eat it for sometimes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I eat the, you know, breakfast. I can't blame you. It's it's a pretty good thing. Yep. Now before t before we wrap up, Tony, is this is time for your corner? What is uh one thing? It could be a book, a resource, a person someone should follow or check out, YouTube video, whatever. Under the sky, what is one thing that you think a dream chaser should be aware of? I'm going to talk about my favorite quote. And when I talked earlier about that aha moment that I had, um, when I realized that I started looking at some of the things I've been actually thinking about doing that for many years and had done the, gone through several motions, you know, talk about my book that I have that you mentioned, Nine Steps to Successful Goal Achievement. I actually had the outline for that book back in 2004, sitting on my computer waiting to be done. Wow. And, you know, I had that out there. I, you know, had this program that I've taught before, the goal getting, don't just set them getting program. And I didn't do anything with it uh, other than I had all the slides and the presentation. I've done some presentations of it before, but I didn't really do it. I did all the work to get prepared, but I never did it. And, you know, then I heard this quote from Ernest Hemingway, never mistake motion for action. And if you don't act on it, you can think about it. And that's the problem with New Year's resolutions. As I mentioned, we set resolutions, we think about it, and we do the motions, but we really don't act and don't do the things that we need to do. So once that aha moment hit me and I thought about that quote, I just started acting on it. I started the podcast. I started, uh, you know, writing the book and putting the content into it. And then I published the book. I did all that within a one month period because I had to start that action. I had to start doing what I needed to do. I started building my social media presence. I started doing this in my spare time, you know, working when I could, getting up earlier, staying up later, doing what I had to do to be able to accomplish that. And within, you know, a year and a half, I have essentially achieved the goal that I had set at that point once I reached my aha moment because I followed the steps that uh, I teach in the goal getting, you know, don't just set them, get them program to be able to do that. But I took the action. If you don't take the action, if you don't define what those steps are, if you don't do those steps, then you, you don't get anywhere. So that to me is the biggest thing. You have to do 
you know, not to necessarily give Nike a plug, but their motto, <laughs> just do it. It is it's true. simple, but accurate. Yeah, absolutely. And that is a wonderful quote, guys, and one you guys should take to heart. So um, hopefully you guys understood everything Tony was saying. It's uh, fantastic stuff, very deep stuff. And so definitely come back to it. You know, he does have those nine steps in poster form, and I'll have a link in the show notes for that if you guys want to get it. Print it out, put it on your wall, put it in a notebook, put it somewhere for you to see and remind yourself, hey, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And do that for you. So, Tony, any last words for the people? The biggest key is understand your why and know why you're wanting to do something and like you mentioned earlier make sure you're on your path you know when i started in martial arts one thing i learned about was what we called the mushashu gyo which is the warrior's path and that's knowing what you need to do don't do what other people want you to do find out what your goal is what your why is and go for it Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tony, for showing up on the show and, and sharing your knowledge with Dream Chasers. Guys, I cannot encourage you enough to reach out to Tony. He's on social media. The links are there. Tell him you said hi. Tell him you checked out the show and let him know if, if it helped you. Yeah, if I can't help you, like I said, I'm on social media. I, I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm on you know LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. You name it, you can find me. So. Dream Chasers, that was Tony Woodall of the Goal Getting Podcast. For notes on what Tony talked about today, as well as mentions of any links that he talked about, you can find on the show notes page over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com slash episode 18. That's episode 18. Connect with us over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com as well as on social media, guys. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On all of those platforms, we are Chasing Dreams HQ. So until next time, guys, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Or leave a comment on her website, ChasingDreamsHQ.com. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing.